All right. Good morning. Good evening. Hold on. Let's do this. There we go. Hey, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you are in the world watching us. Thank you for joining. This is RTOD's very first live stream event. And uh, I, I think we're going to do something maybe a little unique, maybe something you don't know about. And hopefully something you'll enjoy. So um, just want to talk a little bit. I haven't been posting uh, as much as what I have lately. Uh, we just welcomed uh, my third child in, my son, Charlie. So uh, life's a little busy right now in the household. Uh, but we still got a lot of projects going on. Uh, I have videos planned that I want to release. There, there's an LC sitting under this desk in various states of repair. So we are working on some projects, and we are going to be pumping out some videos. But right now, uh, we're going to take a look at something I think you're really, really going to enjoy. Let's get the cameras switched around here. So this is Snap Circuits. It's a, um, it's a learning tool for electrical engineering and introducing really children, um, even though it says ages 8 to 108, to electronics, uh, electrical theory, how circuits work. It's made by a company called Ellen Co. And, and I'll be honest, um, I never heard of this until I found this. This is something I saw on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, it was one of those things where the family was moving and like, hey, we got to get rid of it. Come pick it up. Uh, I was eating dinner and I, I told my wife, I was like, hey, I got to go get this. So uh, we got this and I actually got one of those um, for the Nintendo Switch, the box. Um, I don't have a switch. I'm not familiar with it, but it's the box where you can do different like guitar stuff and everything. Um, so maybe we'll do a video with that down the road. But let's open this up. I'm going to kind of go around it, do a couple uh, projects and kind of show this off because I really think I, I think this is a really great learning tool. Um, if you're a, a parent, guardian, trusted adult uh, of semi responsibility and and you want to teach electronics to children. Um, or just anybody who isn't familiar with electronics, it can be difficult to explain some of these concepts. I remember when I was in the Navy and I would try to talk to new sailors about some of the electronic systems we had on the ship, I, I would often find myself using water analogies. And maybe if you're familiar with because, you know, when electricity is going through a wire, it's kind of like water going through a pipe. You know, you can have pressure, you can have regulators that can control the water flow, and that makes sense, right? But sometimes for children, you know, they don't understand. It's hard to use analogies if you don't have a base. Um, but this is hands-on, and one of the great things about it is it's, it's solderless. You just snap them together like the name suggests. And just to show you here, you know, it's... It's like those buttons on a jacket, those little metal buttons. You just snap them together, and that makes your electrical connection. And then you can just pull it right apart. Um, it's it's really simple. I, I played with this with my five and three-year-old, and they loved it. And one of the uh, projects I want to do with you tonight, um, I'll tell you a little story. It was building a little fan, and uh, I was trying to explain how resistors worked, right? And... Um, you know, my son picked up on it because the fan was spinning really fast because it was hooked directly to the batteries. And he was like, well, if we put a resistor on, would it slow down? Well, let's find out. And that's the great thing about this is because you could just plug and play and go. Um, so before we look in the books, let's just kind of look around. You know, this is the, um, what I think called the 107-piece the kit. I think this is the largest one they come out with. There, there's different tiers. Some of them are um, more geared toward maybe solar learning or gates. So you can uh, visually have AND gates or gates, which I, I think is a great concept to teach that. Um, but this one has pretty much everything they have, as well as the ability to hook it up to your computer. I haven't played with that yet, but um, it, it looks like it just goes through the audio jack. And then you would download um, a monitoring program. I think it kind of turns into almost like a glorified uh, voltmeter. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, we have our, our solar cell. We got a little LED light. Um, this is kind of like a, I had a kit from Radio Shack as a kid. That's something very similar. And you can light up different letters or numbers based on how you hooked it up. Um, capacitors, different alarms. So really, they're just... Um, Speakers, I believe there's an IC in here, so this will be an alarm. 
Um, this will make music. And then this one they call Space War. We're going to try to do a little project with that one because that's really great. Um, so this is a recording ding. Um, we got a little meter over here, an amplifier, uh, a little motor, fan, a larger speaker. I mean, this is this is everything that you would need to do a lot of projects. There's uh, five or six different project books. Um, these are very difficult to get out of here. But yeah, so it's each one's broken out. Experiments one to a hundred, a hundred to three, five to six hundred and ninety-two, and it goes up to six ninety-two. And then these are the ones that we actually use the computer interface for. Like I said I haven't messed around with this yet. Um, I want to I want to have some time myself to play with that before I inter introduce that to uh, to the kids. But let's take a look at the first book here, kind of the intro, um, and I bookmarked some pages that I want to want to share with you. But looking through here, let's zoom in. All right, so. The book is incredibly well written for an education, right? It, it breaks everything out. Here's all your snap wires, here's your whistle chips, integrated music, resistors. This is, these are all the parts that you would need for this kit. Um, then it goes and talks a little bit about, you know, hey, here's some safety. How do we use it? Just some basic stuff that you would think. I do like that they break out their ICs so you know Where's your hold? Where's your out? Uh, where's your trigger? Uh, I mean, it's it's on there, and uh, but it's nice to have the documentation. I mean, this is this documentation kind of reminds me of late seventies, eighties, early nineties computers or or electronics, where you just get a plethora of information that comes with it. Uh, and then you get your project listings, and then we jump straight into the project. You see, it starts out pretty simple, right? Because we want to build up the knowledge. Um, project one, it's it's this very simple electric light and switch. And uh, we'll zoom in a little more. We're not going to build this one, but it's pretty straightforward. You know, we'll have the battery, we got a switch, a wire, and then we got our lamp socket. And, and that's it, right? Um, and this is really, this is perfect to introduce, hey, this is how electricity flows. This is how switches work. And then we can kick it up a little bit by putting a, a DC motor on the switch as well. So we will zoom back out, and the first project I wanna do, it's called the Flying Saucer, um, although I'm probably gonna do it backwards and you'll see why, but this is where my son picked up on resistors because you see, so we have a battery here, very similar to um, the DC motor from Project 2. The battery goes to a switch, then we just have a regular snap circuit, so just a wire, basically, and then it goes to this DC motor. Uh, see, they want positive wired over here. I'm going to reverse it, because otherwise the the wings fly off, and, it, and it'll hit the camera, and then it'll fall down, and we'll have to stop the live stream. But I'm going to wire it backwards, because I just want it to spin, and I'll kind of walk through how we did this with my son just to see that that eureka moment that, that he went through here so we're going to try to do this in a very easy way so everybody can see um uh, because i don't have a lot of desk space right now and um like i said this was uh i'm still working on a good work environment um down in the basement i would like to have a, a really good workbench we have one down there it's a mess um, as my wife will tell you, we have a million other projects that are taking priority over things, uh, and we'll get it done eventually. So we'll start this out, um, and they, they tell you where, uh, you know, it's just like playing Battleship, right? B3, but we're just going to put this anywhere for now. Uh, we'll keep the batteries out for now. There is some hidden circuitry in here. There is a little uh, capacitor in this, I think, just to make sure that uh, we have a constant steady load going through it. And then we're going to need, for now, we're just going to use one of these straight ones. And then we're going to take a switch. Why don't we use, they want us to use S1, which is a normal switch. Maybe, uh, just to kick it up a little bit, we'll use the button. And all we got to do is it just snaps in right there. I mean, this is really, I mean, I think this is a really ingenious kit. 
Let me move this up a little bit. So yeah, it just snaps right in. And then we'll find our motor. They want us to have positive over here, but I'm gonna switch it around so it goes backwards. We'll grab our little spinny cap, put our batteries in, and let's make sure it works. There you go. So it's spinning. Now, if it was the other way, this would fly off. And it's actually really cool. It goes up pretty, pretty far. But this was the point where I was talking to my son about it. And right before we did another experiment where we had a light, and we put a resistor on and obviously the resistor would, would go down. So let's put, let's put this guy on. Let's see if that makes much of a difference. Now, what I were going to do, because electricity is lazy, we're going to move these out of the way because I don't want it to go the path of least resistance. Put that there. Put the resistor on. And, oh, too much resistance. What is that? 5.1K. So let's go down to 100 ohms. But this is kind of where, you know, I, I had my son play around with this. I wanted him, oh no, it's not even doing it now. That's disappointing. Is everything right? You know it's live when things don't work. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Maybe I could have did that. Oh, yeah. You know what? I think that was why. Maybe we do need to have that straight on there. Yeah, so it's much slower now because the resistor on it. Because I have the motor hooked up the right way, if I take the resistor off, this will fly up much sooner. So, come on. There you go. So, you get it, right? Now, unfortunately, it didn't work exactly the way I wanted it to, but that's that's a lot of television for you. Um, but, I mean, these are really great little projects. Let's do let's do another one here. This, this one's called Space War. This is really cool. But before we do this, let's take a look in the chat and see who we got here. I already touched base with Justin D. Morgan. Thank you for coming in, Justin. I appreciate you. And Real Chef Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, who else we got here? We got Spirit Walker Adventures. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining. Um, like we said earlier, if you joined in a little late, this is our very first live stream. So, um, you know, I appreciate you guys taking your time out and joining us tonight. And hopefully we're going to we're going to do some more of these live streams. All right. So we're going to take a look at Space War. So let's bring this down a little bit. Um, it's I don't want to call it a game, but it's it's a noisemaker and it's a really cool noisemaker. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it sounds like, you know, asteroids, space invaders, kind of all of that mixed together. Uh, but basically again, we have the same thing. We got a battery. We have the space war IC. Uh, so that's this guy right here. So it is an integrated chip, um, that has all of the noise makers that it needs to. And then that's going to go through our actually very impressive speaker that comes with us. This is a 8.5 watt speaker uh, sounds a lot better than what I'd expect out of a kit like this. So um, let's start building this one and take a lot. Let's see. Real Chef Tom says I feel like I'm constantly trying to make my office workbench area more. Yeah, that's kind of that. That's kind of how it works, right, man? Um, you, I don't know. I, I so. Tom and I, we actually know each other in real life, and, and he's been in the, the quote-unquote studio and where I would like the studio to be. Um, that's just kind of how it works when you tinker or anything. Um, you don't, it, it's never what it is. You know, I, you know, I think Einstein said, you know, he, he who has clean bench doesn't do work or, or something like that, right? That's just, that's how it is. My garage for the past two months. I haven't been able to park my car in there because I'm trying to rebuild a, an engine. If you saw my Twitter account, uh, it's an old Briggs and Stratton tiller that I'm trying to rebuild. So that's taken over my entire garage. But that's, that's life. That's how this goes when you tinker, when you fix things. You just, 
you're fighting a battle with fixing things like this LC under the bench and uh, the Apple IIc that refuses to work. So you're always fighting to get it to work, and you're always fighting to find areas to work. And then throw on real life, and you're like, oh, when am I going to have time to do these things? All right, so we have our S1 slide switch, press switch, and then... So on... I'll kind of show you things I'm looking at here. Let's go over and zoom in. To show you how thought out these kits are, it might be difficult to see, but there's numbers on each of these little straight legs. You know, we'll call them wires, right? And they correspond to the bricks that go through here. So right over here, there's a small number three, and right up here is a five. And if we look at, oh, right there, there's a number five. And all that, that just corresponds to how many snaps are actually on it. So, you know, this is very well thought out on how how do you build these products how do you make them work and, and how do you lay them out in here so so everything fits correctly and we'll put our speaker here and we need another another three so just to kind of go through this you know again and i tried to walk through this with my kids right you know so, you know, power is going to go through, it's going to go to the IC, right? So we always have one leg going straight to it. Hey, look at that. Um, and then we have our two switches where we can manipulate it. Comes up, it'll go through the speaker and kind of loop back around into the power source or the batteries here. So, look, this is, and all we're doing... So we have our switch, so this is our press switch. And the IC changes it every time. And then we also have our slide switch. So that'll that'll keep it on. And it's the same thing. It, it, it changes the program, right? So it'll play a different sound each time. But we can either do it momentarily or just keep it on. Um, and as you can imagine, the kids just love this. I mean, this is... This is really cool. Um, and th there are some other projects that build on this one, um, but you can imagine, you know, you could put, you know, we can get lights, we can put lights on here, we could try, you know, put some resistors to change the modulations of this. Um, really, really cool. And this is a really basic, basic introduction to integrated circuits. And, you know, how does an integrated circuit work? How can we put that into a larger circuit to actually actually make something. Now, of course, the uh, the kicker is, and what um, you have to explain to people is, the circuit comes pre-programmed. So just like if you're trying to fix something, you know, you need to buy, you either need to buy ICs that are ready to go, uh, or you need to program them at yourself, you know, at home if you have a, an IC reader and you could program those. So you can see how the conversations just really grow from this and people can learn. All right, so let's uh, let's get this torn down real quick. Um, like most things, I'm kind of a stickler, making sure we get all the parts put back to make sure we don't lose anything. Let's get our switches back over here, our threes, fours, and twos. Get space war out of here, and we'll keep the batteries over here. Now, um, the next one I want us to take a look at introduction to gates. Where is my zoom setting? Too far in. Well, let's go out. There we go. All right. So I remember when I started to learn electronics on my own, um, and even, you know, when I was in the Navy and we had to go through, um, you know, techno and ATT and all these tech schools to learn how circuits work and everything. Um, AND gates, OR gates, NOR gates, these were foreign concepts. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're basic, but um, they're a little hard to understand, right? Um, you know, for, you know, an OR gate, right? So if we look at this, you know, basically what we're doing here, we have an LED, right? And 
we want we have two switches. So for an OR gate, if you have two paths, right? Um, do I have something to draw? And can we draw this out? I love drawing things. What is this? Yeah, we'll draw in here. So let me get uh, R sharper, sharpie, sharpie. Okay. So you know, if you had an LED, right? Do 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 do. All right. And you had an OR gate. So we have our power support here. That's legitimately a power supply logo. The way the OR gate would work is one of two things or one of multiple things would have to happen to for this light to turn on. We can either press this switch or this switch, and then the light would turn on. For an AND, think of those switches in parallel, right? Both of those need to turn on for that light to turn on. Very simple to explain, not so simple when you're trying to troubleshoot or understand. So um, so we'll take a look into that. Hey, good enough for me. Thanks for, dude, I, let, let me tell you something before we build this. Um, good enough for me, really great channel. Check him out. Good enough for me. He does really great reviews on handhelds. Um, I love the style of his channel. I really do. Um, he was probably the first or one of the first uh, bigger channels to, to really interact and, and recognize me. And, and thank you for, for joining the live stream. And to answer your question, what cameras are you using for your death shot? So above me, th this is just my iPhone 11. <laughs> that's all it is. Um, and right over here, that's my old iPhone 6. Uh, and we're using uh, OBS Studio right now. That's kind of, that's my setup. And then I got three LED lights that I got off Amazon. So it's uh, it, it's quick and dirty. And um, hopefully it, it, it's looking out. So in the chat, tell me, how is, uh, how's this looking? Is the quality good? Um, I don't think, I don't think I'm doing 4K right now, right? What do you... I don't know what I'm streaming at. 720 maybe? Probably, yeah. I think I kicked it down just for uh, to make the stream faster. But hey, hey thanks for joining. And yeah, it's a, this is an iPhone 11 right here. That's an iPhone 6. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at some of these gates. Um, let's do first. We'll do this or that, um, and we'll kind of demonstrate some of this. So we're gonna need both switches. So we're gonna need our slide switch as well our button switch and a whole bunch of number twos, and a 100 ohm resistor. As I'm sure you can see, I mean, this look, looking good. Hey, thanks, Peter Walker Adventure. Thanks, um, I'm glad the stream is looking good. Um, that was one of my, my concerns with this. So before, almost every night this week leading up to the stream, um, I would just try it out at night, right? I had a whole bunch of unlisted YouTubes, YouTube links. I would start streaming, watch it myself, and and see how it would go. And, um, you know, it worked out. I, I think it worked out pretty good. And, you know, you guys are saying it's working good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, now, one thing I do want to show with this kit, because this is actually interesting, and I, I messed it up. I didn't want to mess it up because I wanted to show you. So you have to think, since we're snapping these together, right? So this gets very three-dimensional, right? So if you wanted to snap, let's see if we can do this. Let's try to zoom in. How's this gonna work? Yeah, there you go. So right here, we have, we'll call it level one, right? We have our, our battery pack as well as the switches. But if I connect the battery pack to this switch here, well, I can't connect it to switch two because you know, now we have, oh, how am I going to show this? Now we have this switch on level one, and this one is now on level two. So what the kit provides you with, zoom back out, is a whole bunch of, they call them ones. They're just one snap circuit. And all you can do is just, we'll put that on switch two. Now switch two and switch one are both on level two. They're up one. So now I can connect them like that. So now we're making the complete circuit around. Now there's some other times where you have to do just some messy stuff where you might switch one off to the side like that, but you know, it's not bad. You'll make it work as you play around with it. A lot of this starts to really become second nature 
and you don't really think about it too much. You just kind of snap through it and get everything together. Uh, do make sure that you know you actually you hear the snap, right? Um, sometimes it'll be close enough and it won't make uh, a real good connection. All right, so we're up to our resistor. What do we need next? We need our LED, and here we go. Uh, make sure the LEDs, you know, make sure you, you have the polarity correct on them. Um, there's a couple things you want to make sure the polarity is correct as we go through. So here we go. So this is an OR gate. So we have two switches here, and either one of them can be on. And of course, we've got way too much light in here. But so I switch this one, the light's on. So I can still press the second one, and it's not going to change anything, right? The light's still going to be on. If I turn the sliding switch off, and I can press it, and the light comes on. So it's this switch or this switch, and the light will come on. Um, if we did an AND gate, which we're going to do really quickly here, guess what? Both of them need to be on. Because in the AND gate, and this is where the drawing would be nice. I would do this on the boat all the time. I'd love drawing things to explain it. Think of it, again, we'll go back to a water analogy, right? So if this is a pipe and this is a pump, right? Because, you know, really a battery of power supply is kind of a pump pushing water through. It's pushing electricity through. So we'll draw our pump symbol there. As the water or electricity is flowing through and it reaches the first switch or the first valve on an AND gate, if I open that valve, then the water goes up to here, but it'll stop here. I need to open both for it to go through. Where on the OR gate, again, if we use the water analogy, right, and you have your pump here, the water will come up and it'll meet both of these equally. If we open up one valve, so if we have one and two, and if we open up two, the water will still go through. If we open up one, it'll go through. Close to, uh, as long as one of these is open, the water will go through. As long as one of those gates is open, the electricity will go through. So, you know, and you might be asking, hey, what do we use and or gates for? Well, a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, any, any IC computers, processor, we're using and or nor gates. Um, Anything other, there's a whole bunch of them, and I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer by any means, but it, it goes out that way. And they are incredibly important when we want to move electricity through, but we need parameters that need to be met. So you can kind of see, um, you know, how an OR gate, you know, you might have two different parameters, and, and either one of those can be met to turn a light on, or an AND gate. We need to have two yeses or two ones you know, binary, zero or one, to actually turn it on to get that desired effect. So let's uh, clean up real quick so we know where all of our stuff is, and then we'll take a look at this AND gate. So again, we're going to use our switches. We're going to use our LED and our resistor. We're going to swap all of our twos out for a three. So our resistor will go over here, oh, over one more. It's a little, it's a little disorientating sometimes. And they're actually having us put the switches on top of each other. And then we'll have our LED over here. Again, making sure that polarity lines up because positive on the battery is up here. So we want positive for our LED over there. So we'll zoom in. A little bit more. There we go. And hopefully this is coming out pretty all right. So again, so we have an AND gate. Both of these switches need to be on. Both valves need to be open for conditions to be met, right? So the way this switch works, this is off over here. So the switch is over here. I could turn that. So switch one is on. It's shut, right? Because when switches, when switches are on, they're shut. When they're off, they're open. Um, get my handy dandy drawing paper again. The way this makes sense, if it doesn't make sense for you, is 
So we have two switches, all right? So we've got some switch metals here. So this switch is open, right? Because um, it, it's open, it's off. This is shut, so it's on, right? This gets, where this confuses people is if we're talking about switches or breakers, because you might open a breaker, open a switch, solder breaker, solder switch. It, it's, it's keywords, tricky phrases, that's what it is. So put our drawing paper away. So getting back here, so we have switch one now is shut. It is on. The light's still off. We'll turn that to off. We've opened the switch. Switch two, because it's a button and it is a normally open, it's not normally off, it, it's open right now. So if I shut it, turn it on, we don't get the light. So we'll go over to switch one. This would be kind of like an or scenario but it's still not met because this is an AND gate. We need both of these conditions to be met. So if I go over to two and then I press it, look at that, now our switch is on. If I turn off one, light goes off. Turn on one, open two, light goes off. That's how an AND gate works because multiple, multiple variables, multiple conditions need to be met for whatever that action is to to kick off. So again, you can see this is really, this is a really great tool. Like, you know, if, if you were a high school teacher or something, this would be a really great way to visualize gates and how gates work. Um, let's, you know, this is kind of fun. Let's keep going on with this. So we have um, neither this nor that. So this demonstrates the concept of a NOR circuit, N-O-R, right? Um, so we have NORs, so we have ORs, O-R, so one or the other. We have AND gates, so we this and that. We have NORs, N-O-R, NOR gates, neither this nor that, and NAND not this and that gates. Um, it can get overwhelming, it can get confusing, and, and I understand if you're thinking, what is this guy talking about and why are we doing this? Well, um, let's build it and, and see what happens and maybe, uh, maybe some things will make sense. Who knew you were going to learn something tonight? I didn't, I'm still shocked that the stream is working. So, get some threes, get some twos, we'll get our switches here. Again, we want to be careful of our levels to make sure that the switches get hooked up correctly. We want a, yep, still a 100 ohm resistor and two and two. All right, so we will zoom in again. I'm not going to lie, this zoom feature is really slick, and I'm not trying to to show off or anything. I really, really like this. All right, so neither this nor that. All right, so how's this going to work? Well, that's on, this is on. That's off, that's off. Something not right here? It should be working, right? Neither this nor that. So nothing. Oh, no, no. You know what? You know what it was? Polarity of the LED. You got to watch that. You have to watch that. Now, now luckily, there is um, protection built into a lot of these um, circuits. There's resistor might not be the, the best example, but there there's more stuff inside this to, to provide some protection. So now, there we go. Look at that. You saw it, right? There we go. So if we have switch number one off, the light is on. If we shut number two, the light goes off. Open two, open one, off. Shut two, shut one, off. Shut one, open two, on. D do you see how the nor, neither this nor that works? Um, I, it can be, it can be a concept. I get it, um, but that's that's a visual of how circuits work, right? All right, so 
we're going to move on to uh, not. So uh, at, at an and, N A N D, NAND gate. Not this and that. So think about think about where we're going with this one. Um, and before we do anything, we're going to verify polarity of our LED. So again, we're good. We don't need to move anything. We will put our 100 ohm resistor there. We have our sliding switch here. We're going to need a number one, switch number two, another number one, a three, and another three. And of course, it were already we're already lit. Oh, is that one? Yeah, there we go. So not this and that. So it's switch two, right? Something doesn't feel right there. How can I do this without making sure you see? Okay, so right now our conditions are switch number one is off, so it's open. Switch two is open, the light is on. If we shut switch one or turn it on, the light is still on. If we shut switch two, it goes off. If we keep sweat switch two, it's remember it's a button. If we keep this shut and we open switch one, it's on. If we open switch two, it's still on. All right, so not this and that. So <sighs> these are more, you can see they're more complicated. Um, this is where you really, if you were trying to teach this, you, you really want to sit down and, and treat this like word games. I, I would write it out. I would actually start to write things out, you know, um, you know, component S37 on, component S38 off, uh, LED1 on, you know, start start processing through that to make sure that in my mind I can concept, conceptualize what's going on uh, in, in the circuit. Because it, it's... This is difficult sometimes, right? Um, you don't see electricity, right? It's just, it's there, it works, um, it can be really complicated. Um, so you really need to stop and try to conceptualize things to make sure that what you're building or repairing, you understand how it works. All right, so let's do, uh, let's, let's do another one here. Uh, let's do the Space War Flicker. All right, so the objective of this one is to build a circuit using the Space War IC to make exciting sounds. Well, I think we can all agree that they were pretty, pretty exciting sounds. So we need our Space War IC. We need our Alarm IC, who we haven't met yet. So this is going to already, I, I am excited. I hope you are. We're going to throw a switch in here. And you can start to see how we're starting to meet the conditions for the ICs, making sure that we have our ins and our outs and our grounds. Uh, da, 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 we'll get a one on here, a two, another two, boom. And then oh, I need a six. Where's a six at? Ooh, there's a six. All right, so how do they have this? We're going to go the whole way up top. Sorry, you didn't see that. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I need to... I'm still trying to figure out the best setup here. So I have my preview and program monitors over here. So I really need to start looking at those more to figure out where everything is. All right, so we'll get our speaker on here. And again, we don't, yeah, we don't have to worry about polarity on this one at all. So we're good. Uh, and then we'll do our outputs of the ICs. So again, right, if you, if, if I was teaching this and I really wanted to make sure that concepts were being absorbed, we would go back, where is it? We would go back to here and let's get our control. Because remember, each of these circuits, or each of these ICs rather, they tell us where our 
ins are, our outs are negative, so in one, in two, in three. So we can actually sit here and start to break down how do these ICs work. Um, of course, we're not talking at the component level, like inside of what's programmed in there. But hey, you know, for space war, right? So on, if, if we're looking at the IC just like this, right? Our, uh, our top left is our positive. Then we go in one, negative, down in the center, in two, and then out. So hey, power from batteries, return from batteries, out to our output, right? And then we have our input controls. That's how, you know, that's how we control this thing, right? And, and look, it makes sense, right? Because on our output, oh, guess what? The speaker's there. So, you know, you can see where, you know, the light bulb would start to actually turn on to people if we were starting to do this. All right, so let's just uh, double check, make sure everything's tight. Yeah, we got positive up there. Boom, boom, boom. Negative down here. And uh, let's see what happens. I, I haven't built this one yet. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, you know, it's. We'll turn it off. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like if you walked into like a like an arcade, right? And you know, late eighties, early nineties, probably probably more late eighties, right? With like a, you know, Space Invaders and a lot of the uh, the older Atari games like that. But that's cool. That's really. But it's fun, and and that's the point, right? Because we're building something fun, and when when you're having fun and you can actually see a product of your labor, that's when you actually start to uh, start to learn and, and absorb things. So let's, um, you know, we're about 40 minutes in. Let's do, let's do a more advanced one. Because remember, this is in the Experiments 1 to 100 book. Let's do, let's jump ahead. Uh, we'll get the, the top one here. I've really only done the first book with my kids, so we're going to see what's going to happen. And we're going to jump the whole way to Varsity League here and do... We're not going to do the computer one because I, I I don't want to look bad on, on live TV. So let's take a look here. Ugh. All right. So this is Projects 512 to 692. This is very... This is extensive. There's a lot going on in here. Um, okay, so oh, we got a solar cell. We get an electromagnetic, electromagnet iron core rod. Yeah, I have that. Okay, bag of paper clips. Did not. Oh, it came with a bag of paper clips. All right, cool. So let's take a look here. Um, oh, and so this is this is cool. actually where is this? Here it is. So in uh in varsity level right so we get to use some of the the pre-built stuff right you get to use your your pre-built um chips ic's resistors but then they give you a spring socket so you can put your own resistors or your own capacitors in so if i wanted to i can break up my bag of big boy capacitors and, and throw them in this kit we're not going to do that though all right so let's take a look at our project listings that we have here. So I don't know how well this is going to come. This is going to be a real test of how the iPhone 11 works as this camera. Um, all right, let's see. Transistor AM radio. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to build that because I don't want to get a content match. Um, electromagnetic storing energy, transformer storing energy, back EMF, um, 2.5 volt lamp current. I want to do something cool. Solar space war. That's probably the same thing, but we're using the solar panel vice um, vice and the batteries. Where is ah? I don't know. As you can tell, right? As we talked earlier, my workbench is an absolute disaster now. Um, I have no idea where my meter is because I'm actually curious on what that solar panel is putting out. Probably around three volts, I would imagine. DC and AC and DC current. Let's take a look at that. That's I wonder, are we transforming? Page 40. That would be really... Let's take a look at this. I don't even know if we're going to build this yet. Let's, let's look at this if we can break this down. All right, objective, to use AC voltage. Sure. Okay, got it. So, um, what do we have here? 
All right, project 589. Um, so it looks like we're using two, oh, so we're gonna use six volts for this because we're using two battery packs, so four AA batteries each. We have switch three, what is what is that? Let me see that if we can figure out what it is. Okay, so here, here's switch three. Okay, cool. And we have a speaker, an LED, and then a slide switch, and there's your transformer. So, what uh, do we have different, how does this do this? Turn the slide switch S1 on the LEDs and flash so fast that they appear to be on. And the speaker sounds. And the other projects relay S3. Contacts open and close rapidly. This causes a magnet. Right, right. Yeah, because we're changing the magnetic field and transformer, creating AC voltage. So what is, and see, again, you can see this. You know I haven't done this before. Um, but what, what is, do they have a breakdown of what S3 is? That's probably in another book, and I'm not that. Yeah. Okay. All right. But uh, all right. So I get it. Right. So we have. So there's contacts in here, right? So just doot, 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 making making connection, opening and shutting, right? So on what I'm guessing, and we'll build it and see, and we'll see if I'm right or wrong, right? But initially on DC. Um, it looks like everything's on, right? The lights are always on, the speaker's just gonna make noise, right? But when we um, turn the switch, then we actually have everything going through this relay. And then instead of having, um, you know, you know, straight DC current going through the relay and the transformer, it's gonna expand and, expand and collapse, right? Because DC is just straight, so it'd be a straight six volts. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, and then when we go to AC and uh, the relay and the transformer work, that DC voltage is then going to turn into equivalent AC voltage with, with some, some normal loss because nothing's a perfect machine. So let's, um, that's really cool. All right, so let's, let's try it. Um, and I'm looking at my monitors this time, so I know I have to zoom out so you see what I'm doing. Uh, all right, so. And those of you at home just joining in, we are going to make AC current from DC. We're not going to use those batteries because I don't know how old they are. Uh, where are, here we go, brand new, brand new charged anyway. All right, so I actually am going to pay attention on the grid lineup because this looks like it takes up the whole board. And I actually think they want, yeah, they want this battery pack to be off the board. So voltage will go there. Just a, I, it's six volts, right? But we're just going to, we're just going to pull these out just to be a good role model or something. Uh, all right, so then switch three. We'll go down here, and we need, we're going to close, so yeah, so this is interesting, right? So the way, um, the way this relay works, you see we have multiple, they show the diagram printed on it, right? So one of the things we need to do is bridge all of these, all of these contacts. I really wish, I got to, I want to find a, a schematic for that. I'm curious on how that one's working there and then we'll bridge everything on this side put our speaker oh i need a riser I need a riser no i don't i need oh this is really really varsity league over here where is our transformer there we go not more than meets the eye but there it is um uh, unlike I'll do a plug for my other video. Unlike this really cheap Chinese transformer from the build your own CRT do it yourself Whamadyne video kit. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Um, I bought a CRT off AliExpress and um, I, I built it. It was a kit. And you can build your own black and white five inch CRT. Um, really proud of that video. Um, it, Probably my first, for me, viral video, right? I mean, for some of you guys, the bigger guys, it's not. 
Um, I'm really proud of that video. I'm actually working on part two right now because this is a, another kit. I bought another one and we're gonna try to have this one actually work because um, the only, in my opinion, the only valuable thing in this kit is um, the tube itself, right? Because where are you gonna find a, a CRT anymore? The, the flyback and da -da -da, the PCB. Um, it's actually a really, a really nice board. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with what they did with this. Um, but, so part two, spoiler alert, um, we're going to try to make it better because the first one, I used all the parts that they provided, right? They, I don't know what that was. Um, they, they provide you all the parts for it. And, um, it, it was, it was great, right? I still think it's a good educational kit, right? You can build a TV and, um, what I've learned is, it was originally built for workers in China who would be assembling TVs and, hey, this is like your onboarding, right? You know, we onboard for HR, they onboard for soldering with lead. Um, but, you know, they sat around in, in a warehouse for forever, right? So they're now selling these things on AliExpress. But um, the part, the components in them are just horrible. They're like the cheapest components I've ever worked with. The, the... <laughs> The resistors on there, if you lick your thumb, you would wipe off the strips on them. And for a resistor, the color strips are how you know the value. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, see, there's little, there's color strips on there, right? And the order they're in correspond to, um, you know, the value of it, how many ohms of resistance it has. So they would wipe off. So I would have to get my meter out and test dozens and dozens of these things to figure out what values am I working with. And um, the even if we had a bunch of the same value or capac capacitors are, are horrible, um, they'd be all over the place. They would not match the value printed on them. And, and you would have two, you know, two uh, 1K ohm resistors and they would be outside of the, the accepted range for me. It was a joke. It was an absolute joke. And uh, one of my viewers contacted me on Reddit. Um, he said, hey, I watched your video. I bought a kit. I built it and the capacitors blew up. And I'm like, oh yeah, sorry. You know, it makes sense though. And um, there's a lot of, and I don't want this to turn into a capacitor issue or a recap issue because I, I see guys, you know, we're getting more guys in, in the chat now with, in the retro tech community and, and recapping is a, a hot button topic. But um, capacitors are important, right? Uh, the values need to be uh, in spec or pretty close. And uh, the capacitors that come with this Chinese CRT kit are just all over the place. So in part two, this is really long-winded where I'm going with this. Uh, in part two, I'm buying all good components, right? Um, um, you know, going on DigiKey, and we're going to replace as many components as I can with quality, uh, you know, quality parts that you would want to get. So um, then you then you can build it, and hopefully it'll work, right? Because uh, the old video is kind of kind of weird, right? Um, Justin asks, what kit was that again? So this is um, you if you can go on AliExpress, right? And it's, it's a kit to build your own, uh, you know, five inch black and white CRT monitor. It, it comes with everything. It'll pick up over the air. It's got RCA inputs. Um, on AliExpress, it's um, five inch CRT. It, it's a really weird, it's, it's just gobbledygook, right? <laughs> it's just a bunch of gobbledygook of words that kind of make sense. If you, go, if you go to my videos and you find it, I have a link um, in the video uh, of where to get it. And uh, I also have a link. So you can get it on AliExpress and then you can also get it on um, insert other Chinese warehouse um, website here. The, um, Eric, hey Eric, thanks for joining. Uh, how much was that gonna cost you? So <laughs> the, uh, the monitor, so it depends, right? Because again, we're, we're dealing from one warehouse and multiple Chinese distributors. I have seen it anywhere from forty to eighty dollars. Um, the first one, I think I bought it for like ninety bucks. Um, the second one, there was a miscommunication between um, their poor English and my Google Translate Mandarin, uh, and I and I think I got it for like sixty bucks. So um, 
I don't know. <laughs> Shop around, you'll find it. Um, well, so yeah, it's oh for for the the good part, like the replacement parts. Uh, off. Uh, well, so all the replacement parts that I bought, minus the uh, minus the CRT, minus the flyback, minus the PCB, minus the really uh, CRT intensive stuff. Uh, off of um, oh, where did I where did I get it from? What well, one of the one of the major parts? I, I'm like less than twenty bucks, right? But th those are quality components, right? Nikon Nikon chaps, um, all the good stuff, right? Uh, if you want, but if you if you bought it off AliExpress as is, you know, you're looking anywhere between sixty to ninety bucks. Usually free shipping. You know, you'll wait two months to get it, um, and you you will build a, a okay monitor, right? Um, if you watch my video, it, it worked. The screen wasn't the whole way. It's not a deflection issue. It's not a horizontal or vertical hold issue. Um, it's just the screen isn't getting enough constant and clean voltage to actually maintain the picture enough, right? And, I, and it's not a gun issue. It's been warmed up. I've done all the troubleshooting with it. Um, Spoiler: I've kind of I've kind of replaced some caps onesies twosies in there and have had improvement, right? Because everybody in the comments like, oh, it's, it's a voltage issue. You're not you're not supplying the right voltage for it. One guy was like, well, he it's like the the transformer you replaced it with is worse than the old one. I can tell by looking at it. Like, no, 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 you can't, right? I mean, that's the 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 transformer that came with it is probably like you know six cents American and. I replaced it with a you know a twenty dollar USA made transformer. It, it's not that. Um, it's just the the voltage on the board. If you probe it, uh, it, it's all over the place, right? Because you have inconsistent resistors, inconsistent capacitors. It's just it's it's all over the place. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked the video out, go check it out. Um, and actually got picked up by Hackaday, which was really awesome. There was a Hackaday article on it. Um, uh, it's it's my best it's my best video i'm i'm proud of it and, and hopefully part two will go even better so um there's that all right so let's go back to making some ac voltage um where where, where was i with this that's that's okay i i love uh i love having some tangents like this all right so uh let's get one of these guys and we will why do they want to do that why don't i just use a three way across so sometimes they will make suggestions oh i know why yep okay so really really fun yeah yeah you are late joe but thanks for joining joe from joe's computer museum um probably you, you were probably over at, at mac yak weren't you i i scheduled this poorly to coincide with mac yak um so for the guys just joining um you know we we talked about my my crt video my, my most famous video uh, Joe, I'm doing part two, so you'll see this guy again. This is a new one. Uh, hopefully it works. Uh, I'm going to replace it with, uh, with American components. Make, oh, hey! Sodium Retro in there. So, yeah, we're going to replace it with some quality components. We'll make a better CRT. Um, for everybody just joining, thank you. I, I assume Mackiac ended. That's why everybody's coming over here, right? It's like when the bars start to close. You go, uh, who's open next? So, uh, we're talking about snap circuits. It's it's an educational game. I call it a game, but it's an educational tool to teach people how circuits and electronics work in a very basic and easy to understand way. And what we're doing right now is uh, we're going to make AC or alternating current from six volts DC. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's take a look here. They want, what is that? Another LED? There it is. Oh, no, we want the green LED and the red LED, making sure we pay attention to our polarity this time. Because when Mike doesn't pay attention to polarity, things don't work. And then I look like a fool on live television. All right, here we go. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay, so let's walk through this. And we will. Boop, boop. We'll zoom in down here. All right, so we have DC voltage here. So the idea of what's going to happen, what should happen, I think, um, when we shut switch one, we're actually going to open it right now, we're going to be using 
just DC voltage to supply. Oops. We need that one in. We'll be using DC voltage to supply power to our lights, our two LEDs here, as well as our speaker. And because it's DC, uh, the lights are just going to, just they're going to look on. They're going to be flashing, but they'll be on, and the speaker will make constant noise. And then when we shut the switch, then we're actually going to divert power through, and we're going to go through our transformer and make AC, and we'll turn that, that straight current, alternating current, and then we should have a different choice. So let's see. Um, like we said, this is a more advanced one. I haven't been this far in the book yet, but let's let's see what happens. So we slide switch one to on. There. Um, yeah. So yeah, the relays are actually closing, right? So let's read this again, because I guess for those of you joining, we we haven't built this this far into the kit yet with my kids yet. Um, so turn the slide switch one to on, the LEDs D1 and 2 flash so fast that they appear to be on, and the speaker makes sounds. Yeah, it makes sounds. Um, as in other projects, oh, so it's referencing other projects. So in other projects, Relay S3 contacts open and close rapidly. This causes the magnetic field. Okay. All right, I got it. So it's building on other projects. Well, that wasn't... That wasn't what I thought. All right, so why don't we? We're gonna do. We're gonna do one more because we're already at an hour on the stream and we got a bunch of people coming in late. Joe, Exodium, some other guys. So we're gonna do one more project for you and kind of show you, show you what we've been doing here for the last uh, last hour or so. Let's do the adjustable solar power meter. I got enough light in here that this should probably should probably work. And there's a meter, so I don't have to worry about finding where mine went to. Um, so let's put let's put these guys away and we'll get ready to build project 528 the adjustable solar power meter Oh Joe I think you caught it Is that what it was Joe really Th This happened to me all night I messed up polarity on it Where was that where was that? Of course, the AC voltage. You're right, Joe. Yeah, I had uh, I'd polarity wrong. So, uh, ten points for Joe. Thanks for winning the internet tonight. Um, <laughs> but you know, hey, I I did that before, and that was kind of the point. I would let my son uh build things wrong and correctly, and then troubleshoot it going through. But that. That's what's so great about this, because you can build things and and troubleshoot and find out where you messed up, or have Joe come in and tell you exactly where you messed up. But that's that's okay, Joe. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the adjustable solar power meter. So I'm actually curious how good this meter is. Let's just uh, let's take a look, shall we? Oh, it works, yeah, okay. Three volts is probably more for it. So, where is our solar panel? There it is. So, for the guys uh, the guys coming, to th this is a really extensive kit. This is the biggest one they make. Um, I did not pay retail for it, thankfully. Um, but really, really awesome learning tool. Um, my five- and three-year-old absolutely love this. And uh, one of the stories I was telling the guys earlier, and we actually demonstrated it. Um, my five-year-old, we, we built a project. We have a little fan on here, and you know it, it shoots up the... Where is it? Yeah, there's a little propeller here, um, and it'll fly up, right, based on the speed of it and everything. Well, if you reverse polarity, um, the propeller doesn't detach, and it'll just stay on, and it'll spin. Uh, and that was really great, because then my son can, you know, learn, well, how does... How does voltage change the speed of it? And then he started messing around with different resistors to change the speed of the fan. Uh, and he picked up on that really quick. And I'm thinking, man, that's great because it would be really difficult to try to explain, you know, how how a resistor would work to to a five year old or or just anybody who doesn't have a lot of experience with electronics. Um, 
unless you visually saw it. And this is a really great way to, to visualize um, electricity and how it flows through. All right, so. Uh, adjustable power meter. Objective, to learn about solar power. Pretty straightforward. Set the adjustable resistor right here, RV for mid-range, mid-range, and the meter to M2 to the low or 10 milliamp settings. Done. Turn the slide switch S1 and let the light shine on the solar, light shine on the solar shell. We'll get my light just in case we need more. Well, there we go. Let's take a look at our zoom. So if we turn, there we go, switch off, you can kind of see the dial right there. Look at that. So we're pulling three and a half volts. And if I put my flashlight on, then we get up to five. So, yeah, I mean, there you go. Visually, hey, I found a meter. It's not my fluke, but I found a meter. So while we're here, let's see how far off this is. What's going on here? Bulls DC, yep. So that's putting on 1.8 volts there, but we can get our variable resistor and we can change it up. Okay, so that's, that's all right. It works, but it's a toy, right? Um, but yeah, so we could take our variable resistor we could turn it the whole way down and get just about two, and we can, you know, peg it at ten. So that's I might I actually might do this with my son. He really likes the solar panel on here. And before we we hooked it up to some LEDs, and you know it was it worked. But I think he would like the meter the meter better. Um, so yeah, that's the last one I'm gonna build. I just want to show some other things in here, kind of as a follow up. Um, later on in this book, as you can see, some of these get really complicated. So we talked about, um, and or nor gates earlier, uh, for those guys who weren't here, go back in the stream. Cause I, I did some artwork. That's my artwork explaining and and or gates. Um, but we can, uh, make things more fun and we can do, um, demonstrate and gates visually, you know, with, with a readout, and, nan, or, nor, and zor gates. I mean, I, again, I, I think that, I, I think this is a really great tool. Um, if for teaching electronics to kids, you know, maybe you want to become better at it. Um, it's just, it, it's awesome, right? This one is, this is the 750 part one, um, this is kind of their, their Cadillac line right now. I, I think you could buy it for a hundred bucks or so. Um, don't don't quote me on that, right? But there are cheaper ones going down to to twenty dollars or so. Um, again, this this was a lot of fun, and you can I think you can see that I, I enjoyed it. I think this is um, a really great learning tool for my kids, and it's fun, right? Because if you're if you're having fun learning new concepts, you're more likely to remember them. So um, again, hey, this was our our first live stream for RTOD, and uh, I think it went well. I didn't have any technical issues. Uh, at least nobody called it out in the chat, so I appreciate that. Um, but hey, thanks for everybody for joining. I really appreciate you taking out your time watching the stream tonight. Um, like I, I mentioned earlier, things are a little busy right now. We got kid number three in the house running around, driving everybody crazy. So, um, life's a little busy. Uh, I do have a bunch of projects working. Um, you know, I talked about the LC down there. I, I got a, um, a, a two C somewhere in, in, in the room. That's just, uh, being a real pain. I, I think it's a Ram issue. I don't have Ram right now. I get to get Ram for it. Um, I got that iBook that I found uh, hitchhiking on the side of the road. We're going to get that work. And of course, the follow up to our CRT video. Uh, I got a Columbia Data Project CPM machine over there, which is awesome, which I need to get working. I will get working. Um, I got projects. I don't have time. We'll get there. I I'm probably going to do another live stream uh, sometime soon. This was a lot of fun. 
Uh, I thank you for joining. So you can check us out, uh, Retro Tech or Die. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and of course, we're right here on YouTube. So thank you, everyone who joined. I really appreciate it. Have a great night, great morning, great afternoon, wherever you're watching us in the world. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.